Chapter 19. Poppers or alkyl nitrites. A few key facts. Originally a treatment for angina, now used to improve sex, poppers are volatile, solvent-smelling liquids. They're popular in certain scenes or circles, and they're consumed by inhaling from a cloth or straight from the bottle. The timescale is short-lasting, two to five minutes. Some effects include head rush, relaxation of smooth muscle, warmth, headache, sweating, and skin flush. Poppers is a colloquial term for a group of substances called alkyl nitrites. Amyl nitrite is probably the best known of these, but others are called cyclohexyl nitrite, isobutyl nitrite, isopropyl nitrite, and butyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite was initially synthesised way back in 1844 by a French chemist called Antoine Jerome Ballard. It was created and marketed as a treatment for angina because the expansion of blood vessels that it induced can lower blood pressure and improve blood flow to the heart. Though, it goes without saying, self-prescribing yourself poppers if you have heart problems is an extremely bad idea and we have better and more effective medications now. Go and see a doctor. This is also how they got their name. The liquid was purchased in single-serve capsules or ampules, which the user cracked or popped to release the vapour to inhale. Poppers were reportedly used in high numbers by soldiers during the Vietnam War. Historian Ian Young, in his book The Stonewall Experiment, suggests that poppers were heavily marketed at the gay community, with adverts in gay magazines in the USA and in the UK in the 1960s and 1970s. There are even some reports that gay clubs would pump amyl nitrite into the air in clubs over the heads of the people dancing, although this could be an urban myth. These days, poppers are found as liquids, usually sold in small bottles with brightly coloured labels and ridiculous names like Bang Aroma, Zap or Rock Hard. The reason for this one might become apparent later. It's currently legal to sell alkyl nitrites in many countries around the world, as long as they're marketed as not for human consumption. Often they are sold euphemistically as deodorisers or leather cleaners, sometimes in sex shops or online. These names and locations of sale might give a hint as to some of the appeal of poppers and the groups of people who might use them. The effects of poppers, discussed in more detail later, make them appealing as something to aid or augment sex. They can enhance intensity and length of orgasm for some people. But poppers are also used in other settings. They were particularly associated with certain music scenes, including disco and rave, particularly the gay disco scene in the 1970s. For those like me who are children of the 1990s, you might also be aware of the excellent suede song Animal Nitrate. In all likelihood, this is a reference to poppers, although it is nitrate rather than nitrite, which is chemically slightly different. Perhaps Brett Anderson was being deliberately a little bit coy with the reference, and it certainly got under some radars, being played on the radio and performed at the 1993 Brit Awards, which had nationwide TV coverage. What are the short-term effects? At room temperature, the strong solvent-smelling liquid becomes a vapour and people can inhale it. Most commonly, it is inhaled straight from the bottle, although some individuals will transfer some to a cloth or cotton wool to inhale from and there are reports that some people will dip the end of an unlit cigarette into the liquid, then inhale it through the other end. If you inhale poppers in this way, it's extremely important A, to inhale from the opposite end to the one you dipped, and B, not to light the cigarette afterwards, as alkyl nitrates are extremely flammable. If they do inhale the liquid, they will likely experience an immediate onset and very short-term intoxication experience, often no more than two to five minutes in total. This mainly consists of a head rush, a feeling of lightheadedness, dizziness and a throbbing head. Poppers relax the smooth muscle throughout the body. Smooth muscles are those in areas of the body where an elastic effect is required. This includes muscles that run alongside blood vessels, and relaxation of these muscles mean that these vessels will widen and blood pressure will drop. Smooth muscle also includes sphincters and the muscles in the anus and vagina walls, which is why it's used by people when they're having sex. Poppers can induce feelings of warmth. Less pleasant effects include headache, sweating, increased heart rate and skin flush in some people. Despite their common use during sex, some men report erectile problems after using poppers. The liquid itself can give chemical burns if it touches the skin and it's extremely dangerous if swallowed. 
It can cause organ failure, blindness, unconsciousness, coma and brain damage, and people have been known to die after swallowing it. If you or someone you know has swallowed it, go to hospital immediately. People have also died after inhaling very large quantities of poppers, particularly if they're blocking their airways and are unable to take on oxygen. What are the longer-term effects? Harms from poppers are fairly rare, but when they do occur, they can be serious. Poppers can increase risks of harm in people with blood pressure or heart problems. It's also more high risk to take poppers if you're on blood pressure medication or if you've taken Viagra. Both Viagra and poppers can lower the blood pressure, and if both are taken at the same time, this can be really dangerous, reducing blood flow to the brain and other vital organs and potentially leading to stroke or death. Although this is rare, the Office for National Statistics report that between 2001 and 2016, alkyl nitrites were mentioned on the death certificates of 18 individuals, making up 3% of the deaths related to volatile substances over that 15-year period. If people are regularly sniffing poppers straight from the bottle, the repeated minor contact around the nose or mouth can lead to crusty skin in those areas. Inhaling, particularly through the mouth, can also lead to accidental aspiration of the liquid into the lungs rather than the vapour. This can also be dangerous, and medical assistance should be sought if this occurs. Some medical case studies of people who have used poppers heavily have found maculopathy, a type of eye damage, or temporary damage to the retina or fovea, which is seemingly reversible after a person stops using but it's hard to extrapolate from case studies, and there haven't been any studies that have investigated the links between poppers and eye damage on a larger scale. Heavy, regular use of poppers has also been linked to an increased risk of methemoglobinemia, where the body is starved of oxygen due to a change in haemoglobin, the substance in blood that transports oxygen around the body to our cells. Some reports suggest this condition even turns the blood a chocolate brown colour. Unfortunately, it's unclear how much is too much in this case, but as with all substances, it's always sensible to have regular breaks where the substance is not used to allow your body to recover. Although there's little evidence to suggest that poppers are addictive, tolerance may build up if they are used repeatedly over a short period of time, which is another reason that regular breaks from using them are a good idea. Myths and misconceptions Poppers increase the risk of cancer. Back in the 1980s, a research paper was published that reported a link between the use of poppers among gay men and the risk of a rare cancer of the blood vessels called Kaposi's sarcoma. This cancer is opportunistic, which means it can affect people whose immune systems are already compromised, for example, if they are HIV positive. The researchers looked at lifestyle behaviours that predicted a likelihood to develop this cancer compared to likelihood to develop other diseases such as pneumonia and found that regular heavy use of poppers predicted Kaposi's. Many studies have found that heavy use of poppers is correlated with an inclination to partake in risky sexual behaviours, and also an increased risk of contracting HIV among men who have sex with men. But this isn't to say that the poppers cause the increase in risk. The relationship may well be in the other direction. People who are more likely to take risks when having sex might therefore be more likely to use poppers as well. Either way, Given the association between the two, perhaps it's not surprising that this rare cancer shown to be linked with having HIV is also associated with using poppers, if contracting HIV is associated with it. It's really important to make this point. Poppers weren't causing people to develop AIDS. Because back in the 1980s, when people, but in particular gay and bisexual men, were first becoming ill with AIDS, poppers were pointed to as a potential cause for what was initially called gay cancer. It was, in all probability, a vilification of homosexuality as deviant behaviour, painting it as men having drug fueled sex leading to the illness. More recently, the link between poppers and cancer has been looked into again, using a large-scale study of people with and without HIV across the USA, called the Multicenter AIDS Cohort Study, or MAX. Max has been running for over 30 years and has around 7,000 participants. Using this data set, researchers found no evidence between use of poppers and risk of a variety of virus-based cancers across their sample. However, in a subsample of men without HIV who were aged between 50 and 70 years old, 
they did find evidence of a link between heavy poppers use and a risk of virus-driven cancers caused by things like exposure to HPV, human papillomavirus, the same virus that can cause cervical cancer. This is quite a specific subsample of their analysis, and the same pattern was not seen in men of the same age who did have a diagnosis of HIV, which makes it even harder to interpret. It may be that poppers might temporarily lower a person's immune system, which combined with risky sexual behaviours could expose a person to viruses like HPV, for example, that increase the risk of cancer. But this is a long way from definitive. So it's unclear, but probably a myth. Poppers burst your brain cells and you can hear it. That's why they're called poppers. If you listen to the beginning of this chapter, you'll know how poppers got their colloquial name. But why did this myth come about? Do you know the current estimate for the number of brain cells in the human brain? It's around 100 billion. And when we're born, we have even more. We actually lose loads of brain cells in the first few years of life, and then again during adolescence, as our brains become more streamlined and efficient. And once we're adults, brain cells still die every day. It's certainly likely that some behaviours are more risky in terms of brain health, but as for poppers causing brain cells to pop, there's absolutely no evidence that this is the case. And even if it were, we wouldn't be able to hear them. We know that poppers cause a drop in blood pressure and a rush of blood to the head. And this can lead to a throbbing sensation in the ears. Maybe this has been mistaken for blood vessels popping by some people. As for whether poppers are neurotoxic, we don't have very good evidence from humans. Some studies using mice or rats have suggested that poppers might impair learning and memory. However, it's worth pointing out here that rats in these studies were injected with various acyl nitrates, which isn't the way that the liquids are consumed by people, so it's difficult to know how transferable these findings are. So, it's a myth. Poppers are psychoactive. In 2016, the UK government brought into effect what they called the Psychoactive Substances Bill, a piece of legislation that was intended to function as a blanket ban on all psychoactive substances, apart from the legal ones like caffeine, alcohol and tobacco, as a way of dealing with newly synthesised substances that were technically legal until they were made illegal by individual pieces of legislation. Initially, poppers were due to fall under this ban, and there was public outcry from many people, from politicians to academics. The Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs wrote to the Home Office and presented evidence that poppers are not, in fact, directly psychoactive. Their letter stated, The brain perceives a transient rush or high as an indirect effect caused by increased blood flow caused by the dilation of blood vessels in the brain and periphery. The effects of poppers on blood vessels in the brain should be considered to be peripheral as these lie outside the blood-brain barrier. The ACMD's consensus view is that a psychoactive substance has a direct action on the brain and that substances having peripheral effects, such as those caused by acyl nitrates, do not directly stimulate or depress the central nervous system. In other words, they concluded that poppers were not psychoactive and therefore shouldn't be included in the ban. And after consideration, then Home Secretary Theresa May accepted their recommendation and poppers did not fall under the remit of the bill. However, more recently, this correspondence between the ACMD and the Home Office has been legally challenged, with a court ruling that peripheral activation on the central nervous system would still legally be classified as a psychoactive effect. The court case was discussing nitrous oxide rather than poppers, but even so, it sets a legal precedent, and so no one is quite sure where poppers currently stand in terms of their legality. Having said all this, Regardless of these legal wranglings, when poppers are sold, they still have to be marketed as not for human consumption, as they are not a regulated product. So whether this is a myth or not is unclear. Do alkyl nitrites have any medical uses? Although initially developed as a medication, amyl nitrite fell out of favour as a treatment for angina in the early 1960s. As an aside, it was replaced by nitroglycerin, probably better known as an explosive. However, in some parts of the world, amyl nitrite is used as an antidote for cyanide poisoning. While it can treat cyanide poisoning, it is a risky method to do so compared to some other available treatments, as it can create a toxic byproduct and is not as effective as some other methods. 
Having said that, it is relatively easy to administer. Some researchers have investigated the potential for using amyl nitrate in cases of mass cyanide poisoning. A review of the animal and human literature on the use of amyl nitrite for cyanide poisoning concluded that the risks of side effects are too high to warrant its use. Side effects such as hypotension, low blood pressure, syncope, fainting due to a lack of blood flow to the brain, and the lack of accurate dosing due to administration from a cracked ampule on a handkerchief. However, other researchers have suggested other potential methods of administration, such as via inhalers, to minimise this problem of poor dose control.